This is question 41. Question 41 says, the researchers have found that it only takes 375 joules of energy to crack a bone. The corresponding energy in electron volt is, and there are 4 options, 6 into 10 raised to power 2 electron volt, 4.2 into 10 raised to power 4 electron volt, 2.3 into 10 raised to power 21 electron volt or 9.1 into 10 raised to power 10 electron volt. Now let us proceed to the solution. The students, the energy in electron volt can be calculated from energy in joules if we divide the energy in joules with the electronic charge that is E. Therefore, we can replace the values. The energy in joules is given as 375 joules and E has a value of 1.6 into 10 raised to power minus 19. On solving this, we get a value of 2.3 into 10 raised to power 21 electron volt. And hence, for this question, the correct answer is option C. Now, let us proceed and solve the next question. This is question 42. In question, the quantities of heat required to raise the temperature of two solid copper spheres are R1 and R2. It is given that R2 is equal to 1.5 R1. Through 1 Kelvin and 2 Kelvin respectively are in the ratio. And the four options are 9 by 4, 3 by 2, 5 by 3 or 4 by 27. Dear students, the heat required for a substance can be written as M into S into delta T. Where M is the mass of the substance, S is the specific heat capacity and delta T is the required temperature change. Now, in the first case, we can write down that Q1 will be equal to M1 into S delta T1. M1 can be written as to be equal to rho into 4 by 3 pi R1 cube into S delta T1. Here rho is the density of the copper here and R1 is the radius of the first sphere. Similarly, for the second sphere, we can write down that Q will be equal to rho into 4 by 3 pi R2 cube into S into delta T2. Please note that as these both spheres are of copper, the density and the specific heat capacity is same for both of them. Therefore, we can straight away write down that Q1 by Q2 will be equal to R1 by R2 whole Q into delta T1 by delta T2. It is given that R1 by R2 is equal to 1 by 1.5 that is 2 by 3. So, this will be 2 by 3 whole to the power Q and delta T1 by delta T2 will be equal to 1 by 2. This gives us a value of 4 by 27 and hence for this question the correct answer is option number D. Now, let us proceed and solve the next question. This is question 43. The question says which of the following graph best represents the variation of resistivity rho with the temperature T for nichrome and there are four options in front of us showing the variation of the resistivity with the temperature. Dear students, for nichrome, the resistivity can be written as rho is equal to rho naught 1 plus alpha delta T, where rho naught is the resistivity at the base reference temperature and alpha is known as the thermal coefficient of resistivity. Therefore, the resistivity varies linearly with temperature and the best possible depiction of this variation is through a linear graph. Therefore, for this question, the correct answer turns out to be option number 4. Now, let us move and solve the next question. This is question 44. The question says, which of the following is correct for transistor in common emitter configuration? There are four options. Input is given between collector and emitter. Second, in output is taken between base and emitter. Third, the variation of base current with base emitter voltage is called input characteristic. Or fourth, variation of collector current with collector emitter voltage is called input characteristic. Dear students, in common emitter configuration, the input is taken between base and emitter, that is between base and emitter, the input is taken, while the output is taken between collector and emitter. Also, the variation of the base current with VBE, that is the voltage between base and emitter, is known as the input characteristic. 
input characteristic while the variation of collector current with the collector emitter voltage is known as the output characteristic and hence for this question the correct answer turns out to be option C. Now, let us proceed and solve the next question. This is question 45. The question says as per Bohr's model which of the following cannot be the angular momentum of an electron in hydrogen atom. There are four options h by pi, 3 h by 2 pi, h by 4 pi or 2 h by pi. Now, let us solve this question. The students as per the Bohr's postulate the angular momentum of an electron should be an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. Here n is an integer and h by 2 pi is a constant. Now the given options we can identify that first option says the angular momentum to be equal to h by pi. Here in n has a value of 2 which is possible. For the second option that is 3 h by 2 pi n has a value of 3 and this is also possible. For the third option that is h by 4 pi n should have a value of half. Just when this is not possible because n can only be integer while the fourth option states that 2 h by pi for which n should be equal to 4 and this is also possible. Therefore, among these four options the only not possible value of n is n is equal to half and hence for this question the correct answer is option C. Now, let us proceed to the next question.